Hello everyone, Alan Sands here, and welcome to this video, this segment on the world's nuclear arsenals, part two, delivery systems. So in the last video we looked at warhead inventories. In this video we're looking at delivery system inventories. And delivery systems of course are crucial because they are the systems that will carry nuclear weapons to their targets if they're ever used. And so the capabilities, the capacities of those delivery systems are an extremely important subject for us. So in this video, we're going to look at the world inventories of delivery systems in the nuclear arms states. Let's get started. So our learning objective in this segment is that by the time we're done, you should be familiar with the approximate number and type of delivery systems possessed by each nuclear arm state. Now, just as it's hard to count nuclear warheads, it's also very hard to count delivery systems. Once again, we've got the secrecy problem. The states are not always very forthcoming about the nature of their delivery systems and their capabilities. And then there's a second problem. How do you count dual-use delivery systems? Dual-use delivery systems are systems that could deliver conventional warheads and nuclear warheads. So how do you count those? If you have a missile that can deliver both a conventional warhead and a nuclear warhead, how do you count that towards the delivery system inventory? Do you count it as a conventional weapon? Do you count it as a nuclear weapon? So a lot of the counting has to take into uh, account the dual-use challenge. So, there are five official nuclear armed states in the world under the Non-Proliferation Treaty. So let's take a look at those first. If we look at the Russian Federation first, we can see our warhead yields are somewhere between less than a kiloton up to one megaton. They have 1,796 warheads deployed out of a total of 7,000. We also know that there is a significant modernization program underway in the Russian Federation's nuclear arsenal. We know that Russia has roughly 324 intercontinental ballistic missiles, missiles with ranges in excess of 5,500 kilometers. We know they have approximately 72 medium range ballistic missiles or intermediate range ballistic missiles or tactical ballistic missiles, MRBMs, IRBMs, and TBMs. And those are missiles with ranges in this category. We know they have about 139 bombers and 13 ballistic missile submarines, which carry collectively a total of 212 submarine-launched ballistic missiles. So this is the Russian Federation arsenal in terms of its delivery system capability. And right away, a uh, key feature of this arsenal is that the Russian Federation has warheads that are based on land, based at sea, and are capable of being delivered by air. Air, sea, land. And this is what we call a triad. So the Russian Federation has a nuclear triad. Their force structure, the composition of their delivery uh, systems for their nuclear weapons, has this three-component element to it. If we look at the United Kingdom, we see something quite a bit different. Uh, warheads in the 100 kiloton range deployed 120 out of total 215, and the Parliament in the United Kingdom recently voted to overhaul its nuclear forces, so some of these numbers might change. But notice they don't have any intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, the United Kingdom doesn't have any medium range or intermediate range or tactical ballistic missiles. They don't have any bombers or strike aircraft, although it's quite likely that some of those could be modified relatively easily in order to carry nuclear weapons, should it be necessary. But we do know that the entire uh, ballistic missile force of the United Kingdom is based on submarines. Four ballistic missile submarines with a total of 48 submarine-launched ballistic missiles. Here's France. Uh, warheads in this yield range, 290 deployed. You can see most of their warheads are in fact deployed. Uh, they have one submarine which is on patrol at all times. 
uh, and no ICBMs, no MRBMs, but they do have 63 bombers uh, and strike aircraft capable of carrying nuclear weapons. But again, the majority of the French nuclear arsenal is based at sea with four ballistic missile submarines, with a total of 64 submarine-launched ballistic missiles. The Chinese arsenal we know a little less about. There's some uncertainties here. Um, the warhead yield seems to be roughly in these categories. We do not know the deployment status. Uh, it's believed that China actually does not have its warheads based on its delivery systems. So they don't have deployed warheads. The, the delivery system and the warhead are not put together uh, as far as we know. And it is believed that a slow modernization effort is underway. We know that they have about 62 ICBMs, about 76 other missiles. We're not sure about this, but maybe 60 of their bombers and strike aircraft are capable of carrying nuclear weapons. And they have four submarine ballistic missile submarines, but there's a real question about whether these are operational, um, frankly, whether they actually uh, work. So there's not a lot of clarity there. So there's a little less certainty with respect to the Chinese arsenal. And then we have the United States. And the United States warhead range is uh, sub-kiloton up to approximately 455 kilotons. We know they have 1,367 deployed warheads. And there is a major modernization program underway that was started by the Obama administration and will be um, continued under the current administration. Uh, we also do know that the United States spends more on its nuclear arsenal than all the other nuclear states combined. The United States has 450 ICBMs. Um, no other missiles seem in the U.S. arsenal seem to be capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Uh, about 91 bombers and strike aircraft, and 14 ballistic missile submarines with 328 submarine-launched ballistic missiles in total. So the United States, like the Russian Federation, has a triad nuclear posture. Okay, so that's the official nuclear states uh, of the world. And now, of course, you know that there are four additional or other nuclear armed states in the world, so let's have a look at them. Israel, um, again, we know a lot less about Israel. Not quite sure what their warhead yield might be. Not quite sure what their number of deployed warheads might be, if, if any, out of the approximate 80 that they have. They, of course, continue to maintain a, a public policy of ambiguity on nuclear weapons. They won't say if they have them, they won't say if they don't have them, but everyone knows they do have them, so it's, it's almost kind of silly, but uh, at any rate, that is their formal um, uh, position. Uh, ICBMs, no, um, but we do believe they have about 24 Jericho II medium-range ballistic missiles. We believe they may have roughly 125 dual-capable bombers and strike aircraft. Um, so that could be used to carry, or modified to carry, nuclear weapons. And they don't have any ballistic missile submarines, but there's been some suggestion that they may possess or may be developing submarine-launched cruise missiles that might be dual-capable, that could be capable of carrying nuclear warheads. India, uh, here's the Indian arsenal, warhead yield range. Again, not really sure about the deployment policy uh, of the Indian force. There's, it's not clear. We know that there's a major modernization of force size uh, increase, which is currently underway. So these numbers will change. They will go up. Um, they don't currently uh, possess intercontinental ballistic missiles, but there is one in the test uh, phase. We believe that India possesses approximately 54 other types of ballistic missiles that can carry nuclear warheads. Not sure about their bomber and strike uh, craft, aircraft force. It is believed they have an air-launched cruise missile in development, and we're pretty sure they do not have ballistic missile submarine capability. If we uh, look to their neighbor, Pakistan, uh, Pakistan has warheads in this yield range, it's believed. Again, not really sure about the Pakistan government's uh, policy on deploying nuclear weapons onto delivery systems, so that's a question mark there. We also know there is a modernization and force size increase underway um, in the 
Pakistani uh, nuclear force. Uh, no ICBMs, about 60 or so missiles ca capable, we believe, of carrying nuclear warheads with a ground launch cruise missile in test. Uncertainty about whether any of the bombers and strike aircraft in the Pakistani Air Force are capable of carrying nuclear weapons, and we believe they do not possess any ballistic missile submarines. And North Korea. Um, and, and this is really highly conjectural. Uh, the, the pure reality is we don't have good information on this. Um, warheads, uh, we don't know. Um, somewhere sub-kiloton to eight kiloton is, is probably about right. Uh, again, no sense about whether or not the North Korean um, nuclear weapons are actually weaponized. That is to say, are they capable, are they small enough of being placed onto delivery systems? That is a question mark at this time. But we do know, of course, uh, that their testing and delivery system development continues. Uh, ICBMs, big question mark here. It's not clear whether or not they have the capability or how reliable it is. Some suggestions that they now have a missile capable of hitting Alaska and may shortly have a missile capable of hitting the western uh, side of North America, but all that is really not quite clear. Um, we do believe they have perhaps around 90 missiles of other kinds that might be able to be modified to carry a miniaturized or weaponized nuclear warhead, but we don't have a, a sense of that. Perhaps 80 aircraft that might be modified in some way to carry nuclear warheads, but again, that's, that's really a guess. Um, we know they don't have any ballistic missile submarines. That's a much more advanced technology, but we do know that there's uh, an effort to develop that technology. So North Korea is quite a question mark. Okay, so by now I uh, hope you have a pretty good idea of the basic um, force structure of the nuclear arsenals of the nuclear armed states. But I wanted to stress something in closing that really when we look at these systems we're really just seeing the tip of the iceberg because all of them require an enormous amount of people, facilities, and funding to maintain these arsenals at readiness. Here's just a quick example. I mean, here's a small number of the United States B-52 bomber fleet. So these are aircraft capable of carrying um, nuclear uh, bombs or nuclear armed cruise missiles. Uh, they may not actually carry gravity bombs anymore. Those may have been retired, um, but they certainly can carry uh, air-launched cruise missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads. But it's not just about the delivery systems, right? The aircraft. It's also about the airfield, the ground crews, uh, the repairs, the spare parts, the fuel, the maintenance, all the things necessary to keep all of those aircraft flying. And here's another example. This is an Ohio class uh, ballistic missile submarine of the United States Navy, and it's shown here in dry dock. So we've just talked about the submarine, and we've talked about the ballistic missiles on the submarine, but look at all this infrastructure. I mean, th this uh, submarine is in dry dock for repair, but look at the size of the dry dock. The United States has a great number of these. All the workers that need to maintain the submarine, refit it, uh, keep it in good uh, working condition. Of course, the entire naval base, Norfolk, uh, Virginia, and San Diego, and other places where these submarines uh, will come for service uh, refits and repairs. Those bases are gigantic. So all of this, of course, costs an enormous amount of money and absorbs an enormous amount of resources. And we can't forget that. It's not just about the delivery systems and the warheads. It's also about everything required to keep them operational and maintained. Okay. So by now, you should be familiar with the approximate number and type of delivery systems possessed by each nuclear-armed state. Okay, so the point here between these two videos, one on warheads and the other on delivery systems, is to get a good sense of the force structure of each nuclear weapons state in the world. And we're going to build on that. Uh, during the course. I hope you found this interesting. We'll see you again soon.